well. To sports for Radio. That's right. Are you ready for this? Hey, you listen, it's going down just like this. Lisa Nooch, Nooch. I'm Nooch. And EJ, the Brain We are now live in 3, 2, 1. Oh, hello again, and welcome to another edition of Sports Palooza Radio. And I really have to get more people to start calling you Nooch, man. I mean, come on. <laughs> What is up, people? I am EJ, and this is the lovely Lisa hanging out with me on this hump day, <laughs> June 13, 2018. How are you doing over there, Lisa? What's happening? I'm doing really well. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and, and I'm excited about our guest for today. Yeah. And just glad to be back on the air doing what we love to do. Yeah, another book review. Yeah, around here, that's mm-hmm. what we, who does that better than us? Uh, seriously, you know, when you write a book... <laughs> And you wonder if there's anyone out there reading it. Uh, listen, <laughs> if it has a sports concept at all, send us a copy. Send it to me because I read every book that's ever been sent our way, honey. Uh, you know this as well as I do. Lisa will tell you that my library is friggin' extensive. Yes. Uh, is it not? I mean, my, yes. I have a whole room full of books from all these people <laughs> who have sent us. And another one came that to us true. today. It's Julian Shabazz. Sent us his book, uh, Black Stars of Pro Wrestling. Of course, he has another book out there called The U.S. versus Hip Hop, which is another controversial book, but they're really cool, man. Ah. Anyway, um, so yeah, we're going to have Julian Chabaz hanging out with us. And uh, man, yep, he was he, cool. We well, went ahead. Yeah. I'll tell you how I met him. I actually went to this conference for journalists to meet with uh, people who have great ideas and they're looking to get publicity. And I was on a panel, and people get a chance to come up and pitch me their ideas. And he walks right in front of me, and he hands me the flyer (laughs) for the book. And now keep in mind, you're supposed to come up and pitch. You're supposed to give me your spiel. And all I did was see the title of the book, and I said, I'll book you. And he looked at me, and I was like, all right, now give me your spiel, but just keep in mind that at the end of this, I'm still going to book you for Sports Palooza. Because... He really focused on a topic that I love, and you guys know from our previous episodes that, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan, and it was just fun to actually have somebody come on and talk about the history in a different aspect of it, and that's the the black athletes, and I think you're really going to like this interview that's yeah. coming up. And we're on that side of it, too, because if there's two people out there who just cannot, just despise the whole racism stuff. It's you and me. Uh, when yeah. is the equality going to start? It's just a ridiculous, just the human treatment of all people. We don't, we don't dig it. I don't dig it. I, I'm no, tired of right. it. I, my God, black, right. white, stop. And, and the, whatever you are, you're human. And, and it's just, you know, you and I get tired of it because it's hard now. It's, it's the 60s are over for, you know, all of us who kind of grew up after it, like you and I, yeah. grew up, you know, I'm 50, you're in, well, you just hit 50 yourself. So, I mean, like, we're... we're you know, we didn't live through that 60s generation with the whole bus stuff and, you know, back of a bus and own bathrooms right. and all that. But the same token, you know, we, we, we know what that was like. And, and that was, I can't even imagine. Well, here, and it right. seems like, and, you know, go ahead. Thing, though, we've, come okay. a, we've come some way, but we haven't come all the way yet. And, and right. it's, it's, go ahead. You're right. We have not come far all enough the way. Yet. However, we are talking about it from the fact that I am a white woman. Yeah. And you are a white man. Yeah, sure. And automatically that puts us up in a level of privilege. Right. Um, Being a woman, not as high as yours. Sure. But from a a respect of being human, we're not talking about that, you know, we have a long way to go in terms of us. Yeah. But in terms of we understand that there is a lot more acceptance. I mean, you look at professional wrestling. Yeah. Over and we're going to talk years. about a lot with that with right. Julian because we're talking about some of these athletes in this right. book who in the 30s and the 40s were, oh my, black athletes. Right. Black, you said black athletes? What, what are... Well, there were, a lot of, there were a lot of black women and black men who started off More in More women industry. almost. Right, and, and they were actually, they were highlighted as Negro wrestler and woman. Right. You know, come see the Negro wrestling yeah. woman. Uh. And nowadays, um, headlining, the, and we'll talk about Money in the Bank later, but right? we have... We have women uh, wrestlers for the WWE that are headlining this upcoming pay-per-view. It's been a long road. It's been a hard-fought road. Yes. Being a woman, being a, 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 a non-white athlete. Sure. Um, but when you look at the diversity that WWE has now, awesome. it's, it's much better than it was years ago. 
But they have actually done a really good job promoting their black athletes throughout the years. But I'm going to save all of that because really Jillian does a great job yeah. of, of going into this. And, and his book is it's pretty much an encyclopedia kind of thing. Yeah. But we go into more detail yeah, about that with him. <laughs> no, no. I just thought it was I just thought it was really, really an interesting topic. And as soon as I saw him, I was like, that's it. Come on, our show. Yeah, he's a character. And that's what, yeah, and, he's really cool. Yeah. That, that's part of it too, uh, you know. I mean, like I, I wish I was there to be there with you at Down the City when you met him. I would have been great because I just couldn't make it. And yeah. That would have been cool because he's cool. I mean, after talking to him, I was just like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you saw my tweet go out to him. I was just like, man, now yeah. that's a cool cat right there. Yes, <laughs> that was is. my tweet. I mean, that's just he's a cool cat. Uh, you know, I do, I love him. And I you love know, it. sometimes you get people on the show who wrote a book, but they can't necessarily really do um, really good interviews. But but he was very very knowledgeable of his yeah. uh, topic, yeah. so that's awesome. Yeah. But before we get to that, let me also tell people who our next guest is going to be on the show, yeah. so that they know. Um, because you know, now we we talk about black athletes and we talk about women. Our next um, our guest on the show is Jordan Zucker, who's a woman, and she actually founded the website GirlsGuideToSports.com. And um, she has run fantasy league for wi- fantasy leagues for women. She's put on ch- um, events with a charity tie. She's raised over thirty six thousand dollars for Planned Parenthood. Yeah, she's actually on a baseball road trip right now, which we're going to talk to her about tomorrow nice. and bring that interview with you. Nice. She also has her own sports brackets that she does. Um, she's done really a lot to, to kind of show people that we you know women are seriously into sports just as much as men. That's cool. Um, so I'm excited about that interview. So that's what we're going to bring you next time. So yeah. make sure that you stay tuned for that upcoming interview. Yeah, as well, that's a good segue too. Because cool. yeah, the segue you mentioned she's traveling right now, and uh, you know, speaking of traveling, you and I just uh, had a nice little trip to Chicago that came up, and uh, boy. Tell you what, we got. To, I didn't get to do as much as you did because, uh, you know, I, my my health isn't a hundred percent. If anyone out there, I, you know, I'm not going to get into that with everybody. But uh, anyway, uh, you know, it, it mm-hmm. was it was you 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 and Sammy had fun. We took Sammy with us, and Sammy, you and Sammy saw Chicago. I mean, I, I went we to did. Harry Carries with you guys. I went yep. to the, what was it, Jordan? No, what was the Italian place? Uh, uh, Giordano's. Giordano's. Yeah, you have Giordano's. to. Okay, you have to go to Chicago yeah. um, and have. If you're going to go to Chicago, yeah. you have to have deep dish pizza. Yeah. Because, you know, here we are, we come from New York, and we know what pizza is to us, even though, you know... The best! Right. Even though (laughs) you have places like Domino's and Pizza Hut that serve deep dish pizza, typically deep dish pizza is not really predominant here in New York. We're the flatter, triangular kind of pizza. That's what we're known for. Yeah, a slice of pie. Right. And I I kind of fancy myself a pizza aficionado. Yeah, you do. And, I mean, I can eat it every day. I just had it today. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have it today. Uh, you? I, I, I had it today too. Yes, you did. Yep. I can have it every single day. So yeah, you have to go there and you have yeah. to try the deep dish pizza. Yeah. And Sammy, my daughter, who came with us, yeah, you did it um, twice, right? Yep. We actually, she actually completely converted to deep dish. She yeah. did not want to come home and have New York style pizza. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, one of the things that we decided to do on this show was to bring you more sports travel news. Mm -hmm. So, uh, since we had gone to Chicago, I wanted to actually just give you guys very briefly just some highlights so that if you're going to Chicago, what are some of the things that you should be doing as a sports fan? Um, you know, there's a ton of stuff to do even beyond being a sports fan, but hey, we're sports. We're yeah, sports and police. obviously That's outside of the major about. four sports, you know, right. it's obviously a natural to see Soldier Field and all the good things that, you know, exactly. we, drove right, we drove right by there. Of course, Comiskey and, uh, right. you know, Wrigley Field and all right. the great places that are there are a natural place to just easily suggest, but you have some other cool yeah, ones too. Yeah, right? I mean, that the first thing that EJ just talked about was when you go to Chicago, you actually ha- absolutely have to see a game. I mean, you have your choice. You yeah. Like he said, you can either go to baseball, see the Cubs. You know, you could see that's that, a, you have six months to do that. You know, that's another thing about that. Right, you, you have exactly. to go within a certain period of time. Depending on what time of year yeah. you're going, you're going to see a particular sport. Yep. So you have the Cubs. You can see the White Sox, the Bears, the, the Black Bears. <laughs> and even the Chicago Fire <laughs> take the pitch, you know. Yeah, they do. So, um, all these different stadiums, what's really cool about it is every one of them offers a tour. So you can get to see a behind-the-scenes look at the venue itself and how the whole team and everything is put together so that that game that you see, how it all comes together and the history behind the team. So not only would I suggest a a, a game, but I would suggest a tour of the particular stadiums. Yeah. Uh, make That's sure, where though, the value is. Exactly. You know, uh, going to the game is one thing, but seeing the background right. of it all and, and hearing some of the stories that these guys can tell you 
that you can hear and you can find out. Yeah, but at the same token, when so you know when you're on these tours and they're not that yep. expensive either. <laughs> no, they're so, yeah. they're not. I mean, it depends on which one you go to. But yeah. like when we went to Green Bay, oh, we, we, yeah. we we did well. the tour. <laughs> we did the tour and then we went. Don't back. even get into Green Bay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. We did the tour and then we went back and and watched the game. So we actually got into the stadium yeah, more did. than once. Three times. Um, so, you know, that's definitely, and when we went to Yankee Stadium, we also got a tour um, mm -hmm. of the stadium itself, and the history is super, super cool. <laughs> you think? So, the other thing you can do while you're there is check out the Chicago Sports Museum. I mean, this thing is huge. Yeah, it it's 23,000 square feet. It's <laughs> filled with the Chicago sports history. <laughs> and what's cool about it is it's, a, it's kind of interactive. So, if you ever wanted to see how you measure up to Michael Jordan's jump or right. Scottie Pippen's wingspan, I mean, you can go in there and do that. And it's super affordable. And here I'm going to give you a cute little tip because it's super affordable already. It's $10 and it's $6 for seniors and, and children, young children. But if you go to Harry Carey's that EJ was mentioning earlier and you go to his seventh inning stretch restaurant, all you do is and give them your ticket. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you actually get into the sports museum for free. Yep. So go to the restaurant first and then go to the museum and you can save a couple of dollars. Yep. Um, because you know how to do it. That's how you roll. Exactly. <laughs> now, speaking of Harry Carey, um, you know, there is also um, another restaurant. He has a, an Italian steakhouse. Um, Oops. And then, huh? Oops. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> and there is, and, and, you know, you can walk around the restaurant yeah. and see a lot of his history, but there's also a lot of really cool photos and signatures that you'll get to see in the restaurant. So the restaurant itself is even a really cool place to yeah, tour, and I had a chance to look around that. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to tell you how much fun I had there. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, just a few more tips, and then we'll get to the yeah, interview cool. uh, and, to, and to what the stuff information that you have. Yeah. There's this statue, and it's dedicated to Chicago announcer Jack Brickhouse, and it's actually outside the Tribune Tower. I took my picture with it. So if you're a Cubs fan or even if you're, you're just in town, that's kind of like a thing to go take a picture of. Um, you know, and, and that's just another thing I can suggest that you guys go do. Um, there are so many sports eateries that you can go to. Yeah. I mean, Michael, <clears throat> Michael Jordan, I dropped the name. Mike Ditka has three of his own restaurants around Chicago. Yeah. We were directly across the street from this <clears throat> little place called Mother Hubbard yeah, Sports yeah. Club. And we, um, went in there to have a, a bite to eat and watch one of the, I think college basketball was going on at the time. Um, so you definitely want to check out some of these eateries because you're around other sports fans who are watching the games just like you are. And it's the energy and the excitement. It's kind of electric. I remember Loyola Chicago was in the final four when we were there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Right. I, went down the, I went down the street and had, we got a drink down at, uh, I forget, what, what, right next to our hotel. It wasn't Mother Hubbard's, but it was right next to it. We went to that restaurant. They, yeah. they, they were showing that. Oh, my God. Those people were crazy. Of course, Loyola Chicago were in Chicago. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, Everyone dressed a, in yellow. And it was uh, that was fun. <laughs> and it is a lot of fun yeah. being around the other people that are, are watching the games. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Love that stuff. And then just two quick things. Um, the Museum of Broadcast Communications is exactly that. It's a museum of broadcast communications. But I loved talk that about, place. I loved yeah, it. That was a blast. It really was. It it was my favorite place to visit because yep. I'm a media person. Film, TV is my thing. And we had the but Saturday they, Night Live thing there too, right? right? And they, they followed us and retweeted us too, all yes, that. They yeah, did. thank you guys. That was yes, cool. They did. <laughs> so, yeah, we, and we did the whole picture with uh, Jimmy Fallon, right? And, yep. uh, um, yeah, and uh, <laughs> the stage stuff that they did. I mean, they did a good production. I mean, yeah, they, they do a good do, job of the good tour. They, they do this kind of mock production yeah. of um, Saturday Night Live that you get to sit there and watch as if you were in the audience. Yeah. It's really cool. And their tour is cool because it's a self tour. It's not like right. people are guiding you around. You're basically just free to roam, yep. you know, and you floor can by go floor. through it as fast or slow yeah, as you want. Yeah, take your time. No one's saying, all right, it's time to move on here. Like, it's just a basic walkthrough. You pay your ticket and just go float around. And right. That's cool. I, I like that. And yeah. there is a sports section. Yeah, there which is. is. what I was getting to also. I have because... pictures on my Twitter feed of that. If you want CJ the Rainmaker, go check out my Twitter feed. You'll see I have like four or five pictures of the sports section that you're talking about in the museum. Right on my Twitter feed. So, yeah, because yeah. you can't talk about television without talking about sports television okay. history. Love it. Want to give a quick shout out to, because we stayed at the Chicago Marriott Downtown River North, oh, and that is the exact name of the hotel. Yep. And I would give it five stars okay. if I could. Six. Um, I really would because, you know, we've stayed in a lot of different places and um, we've met a lot of different people yeah. who work there. Yeah. And these are people who went above class. and beyond. Just class. At, 
to just treat you as if you were family. Everybody smiled. Yep. Everybody was nice. Everybody was a good morning. Everybody was, was a how are you today. The place was clean as hell. You right. I, everything was great about it. The yeah. little breakfast they had down there was great. I'm sure by the time next time we go down there, they might have their restaurant all settled right. up down there now. Right. Because they were in the middle of putting that up. And uh, yeah, River North. Yeah. Tremendous little place. You're in a great location. There's 7-Eleven's right across the street. You need something quick. Yep. The Jazz Club is right across the street there. The Dunkin' Donuts is right up on top of the bridge. And it was in yeah. walking distance to everything. just about everything that I mentioned to you that we three did. Three miles? It was in Two, three walking miles? distance, even less than that. Yeah. It was within a mile walking distance, every one of these things that I mentioned. Yeah. Um, so definitely our first um, sports entertainment, sports travel and entertainment mm -hmm. segment is dedicated to yeah. Chicago. Oh, yeah. Please go make your trip. It's a great place to go. <laughs> Thank you. Especially it, mm. weather being a little warmer. We went there. It was 30 oh, degrees. That was we part of it, too. Off. It was cold. Yeah. <laughs> but we did have an absolute blast. Mm -hmm. And the sports fan and you should really yeah. get out. So yeah. thank you. The Sports Travel, travel Center hey. is sponsored by the Virgin Travel. Hey. <laughs> we know her. So what do you have for <laughs> us today? Hey, you know, I'm just, I wanna, I'll am i get to my stuff after we get the interview. Because I want to talk about some World Cup stuff, some tennis stuff. and. Sounds good. Yeah, I definitely want to get my man out there. Uh, man, to have Julian. Uh, Brother Julian. He's pretty cool. So uh, we're going to get to Brother Julian's interview. And um, we'll air that. And then Lisa and I will be right back. All right. And look who our guest is today. We have Julian Shabazz hanging out with us. He is, of course, the author of Black Stars of Pro Wrestling. There's another book out there called U.S. vs. Hip Hop 2, which is pretty cool, by the way. <laughs> Julian. Brother Julian. How are you today, my friend? What's happening, man? Fantastic, DJ. How you guys doing today? Oh, man, I'm pretty well, man. Thanks for hanging out with us. You know, we got a copy of your book here. And I, we love doing this stuff. I, man, you know, you, you get you got Lisa and I both here because Lisa loves wrestling and I love history. And you pretty much just covered the history of wrestling, man. That's an awesome book. That, man, you know, I actually saw an interview with you where you were putting the book together and you didn't actually, like, go interview all these guys, man. So, so tell me about putting together, putting together this book and what, what kind of a challenge it really was. Yeah. Or WWF at the time and WCW. So to try not to get to play any politics with either side because it was totally political then. Yeah. You know, I just came from the total perspective of an outsider. Right. Hey, as a fan, just, you know, I loved all those guys. So I didn't want any politics on one side or the other, you know? Yeah, that's cool, man. I get it. The whole unbiased attitude. And that's cool, man. Um, you know, at the same token, now, now, what about volume two, man? Do you think now a lot, a lot of people are asking you to put out a volume two? I, I'm not sure what you're going to do yet, but do you think volume two might consist of some stories with some of these guys is actually referring back to what they went through? Because a lot of these guys are still alive, man. So, you know, it'd be cool to actually get some interviews with some of these guys who are left and get their opinions about, you know, the book and what they went through and their experiences, man. Nice. So I, I actually am acquainted with quite a few of them, but and I'll be talking about it. It's such a touchy subject when you get into race yeah. in wrestling that I and, yeah, I am a fan, and I wanted to celebrate these athletes and not come with some of those other stories because the stories are out there. You're right; they're, they're very interesting. But I wanted the first real publication to be more of like an encyclopedia type. Yeah, I love it. Go ahead. So how did you start getting into being a wrestling fan? I mean, I've been a wrestling fan my whole life, I think, <laughs> since I could hold a crayon. I've been watching wrestling matches. And then I turned around and got my kids started in it. And it, even though they're adults now, we still actually text with each other every Monday and Tuesday during the matches yeah, yeah. because they're across the country now, but it's still our way to come together. So um, when did you get start getting into it? Um, and and what, what did you find such an attraction about the sport? You know, Lisa, I used to always answer that question by saying I was a, I'm just a lifelong fan, but I like your answer even better. I started with crayons with <laughs> 
<laughs> so when you were... and actually where I am in South Carolina, I grew up actually in the area at the time of the old territory. And this was the territory that I lived in that was promoted by Jim Crockett. Remember Jim Crockett? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The precursor to W what ultimately became WCW. Yep. A portion of that was Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling. And I grew up in that territory, which it promoted the Carolinas, Virginia, and I think a portion of Georgia. I see. We're a big part of the Northeast wrestling stuff that goes on up here. We go to all their events at the stadiums and stuff that they do up here, too. So we love all that independent stuff, man. It's, that, that, that's as much fun as all the big, big-time TV stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Hey. Absolutely. Yeah, man. You know, congratulations. Man, I got to congratulate you on the Kwame Turf Award, man. I saw you could say that speech you gave at the... That's cool, man. I mean, how'd you feel about it? I, I was just a cool man. I love the way you 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 are a great speaker, man. I am. How are you not a preacher or someone out there giving motivational speeches to people? Man, you carry yourself so well, uh, Julian. Honestly, man, I, I just you do a great job, and you did a great job giving that speech, man. I, that was a, that was a cool. That was a cool video. Thanks, and, and, and I want you to know your text in the mail. Nice. <laughs> nah, you know, that's cool, man. Thanks. Uh, you know, I, I, Julian, man, the 30s stuff that you have in here, man, that's the kind of stuff that, that really gets me. When, you, when you're going back to the Betty Whites and the, and the Kathleen, <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> Wembleys and the Babs Wingos, man, how did you get those kind of pictures? Cause when you see pictures of those girls in the 30s, and it's just that's the kind of stuff you look at the, you look at the book, you're like, now nah, he really went and found some old stuff. How did you get the old, old, old stuff? man well you know EJ you being a historian you can really appreciate this yeah when I first got started that's what I did I reached out to a lot of those old guys who who had written for like Pro Wrestling Illustrated nice and a lot of those older magazines so I went and found old historians who were wrestling historians nice and and people don't believe that they're wrestling historians but they really are and it was amazing because those guys were just itching for, for a fan like me <laughs> to come up and want that information. So they shared so much information with me. And I'm glad you brought that up. And I always like to point this story out. This happened to me once. I actually, in a lifetime, I, I'm, a, I'm a professional um, public librarian in another lifetime. And... I was working at the uh, library in Lawrence County, South Carolina, and one day, and this is about 90, this is about 2000, 2001, and my co-workers came to me and said, oh, Julian, there's a lady here to see you. So I went out to see the lady, and I didn't recognize her, and she introduced herself to a senior citizen, older lady, and it turns out she was the widow of Edward Bearcat Wright. Now, you know, I talk about Bearcat Wright in the book. And Edward Bearcat Wright was the very first African American to hold a version of the World Championship. In 1961, he won the WWA World Championship. Wow. And his wife came to my job to meet me after I had done that book. So it was, it was it's a thing where. As EJ mentioned, a lot of these guys are still alive, their family members are still alive, and they appreciate that someone appreciates them. Man, that Bearcat, that Bearcat right photo is insane, man. He looks like he should, he should be playing football on any team, anywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and from what I understand, Bearcat Wright himself was about six foot seven. Yeah. Six eight. Huge guy. Yeah, six eight, two eighty something. My God, man, a biscuit shy, yeah. biscuit shy of three hundred. If he was actually training, right? <laughs> right, right. Exactly. If he was actually training, exactly. Right. And he was a contemporary of guys like Buddy Rogers, Lou Fan. You know, he wrestled all those guys. Yeah, man. It was interesting in that in certain states, it was interesting because like he wrestled in like Princeton, Illinois, and they'd have integrated matches there. But next door in Indiana, they would bar integrated matches. And Edward Bearcat Wright took a stand yeah, he did. saying he's never going to wrestle in, a, in an arena that will not allow interracial matches again. And really, it was all about his, his purse, you know? I mean, it was a financial thing right, well. as far as it was a social thing. I mean, it was now cutting into his payday. Well, 
Well, you know, you talk you talked about that kind of change in the way that wrestling was where, you know, the, the integrated matches in your history and, and, and in your research and doing this, what other changes have you seen over the years? I mean, you know, I, you see now, and, and I still think it's a struggle today that a lot of the black wrestlers are not headlining a lot of the main events. I mean, you have people like, you know, the New Day who headline events, um, but it's not as big as it could be. So what what do you think has changed has changed over the years, and what still needs to change? Great question, Lisa. You know, and, and can, if we start at that starting point, Edward Bearcat Wright having to basically protest just to get a chance at the World Championship in the sixties. If we move on into the seventies, you saw. African-American stars start to rise up in terms of national and international popularity. The Junkyard Dog. Oh, I remember him. King of New Orleans. Yep. You know, Ernie Ladd in in the the Mid-South area. You know, uh, Thunderbolt Patterson in the Mid-Atlantic Territory. You had the the Rocky Johnsons and the Tony Atlases in the Northeast. And then moving on, into the 90s when we had the breakout of Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. So I've seen the changes and I appreciate them, even though they've been slow and there's, we still want more to happen. And you mentioned the New Day. One of the guys from the New Day is actually from South Carolina. He's a graduate of Furman University. The guy who plays the trombone. <laughs> Yeah, that's Xavier Woods. Yeah. Okay, okay, side note, I got to do a little bit of bragging here, okay? I'm going to have a mom moment just for a second. So, Xavier Woods is one of the most popular wrestlers in my household, okay? And, yeah, he is so much fun. He's so intelligent. He's so creative. And so of course, Kofi. He is. We'll get to Kofi in a little while. <laughs> But the one cool thing is that um, my son always, my son is a huge video gamer and he always wanted, because, you know, Xavier Woods has this really popular up, up, down, down video game channel. So my son was like, you know, one of these days I'm going to play against Xavier Woods. So my son moves out to Arizona. Lo and behold, WWE holds an event in Arizona. Xavier Woods posted, where's the closest gaming site? My son wow. goes to the gaming site, hung out with Xavier Woods for like a half an hour playing Tekken. Yeah. Beat Xavier Woods yeah. in Tekken. And I don't think the yeah. smile has come <laughs> off my son's he's, face. He's still smiling, man. He is still <laughs> smiling to this day. And his, his Twitter picture is a picture of him and Xavier Woods. And it was seriously one of the coolest moments. He is one of the nicest guys and, and really did a lot to change because I think for him and Kofi and Big E, I think their trajectory wasn't going very well. And the fact that the three of them came together and, and created this group, because nobody knew what to do with Big E. I mean, he was all over the place, you know. Kofi, had, Kofi has an incredible talent, but they won't give him a title, like that many titles. You know what I mean? Like, they won't let him hold it right now. So for the three of them to come together, the chemistry was amazing. And they have, yeah, yeah and it worked for them, you know. And I actually, I want to talk to you about some of the other wrestlers, too, um, that you mentioned in your book, if, if you don't mind. I mean, because sure. earlier this year, um, Devon Dudley and Bubba Ray um, were inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. And, um, you know, I mean, have you noticed, um, you know, like the, the, the response to, to having more African-Americans in the WWE Hall of Fame? Or, you know, what, what's been that... Uh, what's your opinion about that? I'm really glad to see that, to be totally honest with you. Because it, it, let's not just say African American. WWE, WWF, WWWF, they always had a lot of ethnic performers that were extremely popular. Yeah. So it's really good to see them now really acknowledging the contribution. I mean, we just lost Bruno San Martino yeah. a yep. couple of months ago. I mean, look at how powerful Bruno was. I mean, everyone loved Bruno. Yeah. Everyone did. Well, it was a similar, you saw the similar thing with The Rock. You know, everyone loved that guy. When he, same thing, when he started off, they didn't know what to do with him. Right. <laughs> but eventually, he caught on. And, oh my God, then shot, shot through the stratosphere like Hogan. So, it's good to see WWE acknowledge 
acknowledging and recognizing these guys. And you mentioned just, well, man, I love the Duffy boys. I love the whole Duffy family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But I still think that there's a way to go. You know what I mean? Like, they, they still, I think, in my opinion, have to do more in terms of giving, um, you know, m- more diverse athletes the spotlight. I mean, you know, fortunately... Well, Naomi's looking great right, right. now. Right. I mean, we have even the women who are, who are coming into the spotlight now, and, and even the African-American women. You have Naomi, who's seriously one of my favorite female on that roster you know and and but i still think more can be done i mean i still think there's some barriers that they have to break what do you think oh i totally agree totally agree totally agree (laughs) but it's and it's it's interesting though because you know it's like promoters promote promote for different reasons and at different things at different time frames Different, uh, different athletes, you know, catch on at different times yep. for whatever reason. And so I think, you know, McMahon and those guys are always trying to tweak, you know, trying to find the latest thing, the newest thing, and they have some really good talent over there. Yeah, they really do. And now there's not as much competition, you know, they're not, it doesn't seem that they work as hard. Yeah. <laughs> Right. That's just my opinion. Nah, you're right, man. You are so right, Julian. Um, you know, I, I just, as, as I'm working my way down this book, man, you work your way down to Woody Strode, man. Now, all right, listen, Julian. <laughs> you want to talk about history. Now, I, I mean, between what him and Kenny Washington did, and then uh, you know, to, when you mentioned that, oh, there was this guy named Jackie Robinson in that backfield in that UCLA. Holy cow, man. T- t- can you even imagine what those three guys actually really did for the entire black community uh, and what they had to go through to get there, man. Those three guys are so influential. It was just, it, it, that paragraph alone is so powerful. I, I think it's the most powerful in this entire book, man. I love reading the story of those three because everyone knows them and what they've been through. EJ, you're absolutely correct because, and, and those three guys, they called them the gold dust yeah. when they were students at UCLA. And all three of those guys, Kenny Washington, Woody Strode and their and their younger teammate Jackie Robinson. <laughs> the three of them integrated two of the most powerful, most popular sports in America. Man. Jackie came up with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Woody Strode and Kenny Washington both signed with the Los Angeles Rams of the NFL. Interesting, Woody back in the 1936 Olympics. Everyone remembers Jesse Upwinds and what he did and when Hitler got up and walked out. But people don't always remember the story that Hitler saw Woody Strode. Woody stood about 6'4", 6'5". Hitler saw his body and commissioned his painter to paint a portrait of Woody because he'd never seen a physique like that. (laughs) And then later on, Woody, after after, after his professional football career, he went in and became a pioneer in professional wrestling. After his wrestling career, he became an early superstar, black superstar, in the movies. Yep. He was one of the stars of Spartacus, the original Spartacus with Kirk Douglas. Man. Sergeant Rutledge, you know? Yep. He was, he was a major star. Man. So he was a very interesting guy. <laughs> Man. That picture you have in the book of him, man. Uh, excuse me, Pex. Uh, my God, man. <laughs> yeah, that dude, he's just built like a shit house, man. It's really hard to even imagine. I, could you imagine some of these guys that you have in the book that are like in the 30s and the 40s that were just not accepted in the whole sports world yet? And just having five, just having five of these guys show up together and saying, did you say you don't want us on your football team? Do you realize I'm 6'7", six, I'm six, 325, he's 6'4", 318, and you don't want us on your football? team huh yeah okay guys <laughs> big mistake man big mistake i i mean can, man I would, give, the, give the renegade american football league a lot of credit yeah back in the 60s because they were like the heck with the nfl they saw those black colleges over there with guys like ernie Ladd at six eight you know 300 pounds they're like hey come on over here and play for the houston Oilers. <laughs> We will accept you, man. Yeah, we'll even pay you. To, we'll even pay you, man. Yeah. 
It's <laughs> awesome, man. I, I, who's the oldest living member in this book right now? Did, did you? Did you? I, I couldn't figure it out, man. Do you know? Say it again. Who's the oldest again, oldest living member in this book? Who's Who's the oldest guy who's alive in your book? Well, he and he just died. My oh. Uncle, Tiger Conway oh. Senior. Tiger Conway, and I actually did talk to Tiger Conway Senior because again he wasn't with one of those federations. And, you know, I didn't owe anybody anything. You know. <laughs> and he just recently died, not long ago. Man, you know what about your video with the whole U.S. versus hip hop book you have too, man? I mean, that's you know, ten years ago. How, I mean, do you still get people talk to you about that kind of stuff? Because that book was pretty influential too, man. Well, thanks. I, I thought it was. I thought it was an interesting topic. Yeah. At the time, I was actually in grad school when I wrote that. Mm. Uh, you know how it is in grad school. You're writing all these papers. And I'm like, the heck with this. I want to write about something I want to write about. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I started writing about rap music at the time. <laughs> you know. But the thing about it was, at the time, there was a lot going on. I'm talking about yeah. cases that were threatening to go to the Supreme Court. Yeah. All kinds of things. I mean, the parental advisory stickers started coming up. You know, record stores don't exist now. Yeah. But that was a big deal then. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that record stores don't exist now. But all those things I grew up with, they're all on an app in a phone. I know, man. Telephone, uh, video, right. digital cameras, all of those things that are just apps. Man. <laughs> I'm fi- I just turned 52, man. I'm right behind you. Like, damn it. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I just, man. You know exactly what I mean. Man, I, I have dialed the phone, man. I know what it feels like. <laughs> I have gone in a phone booth, man. You know? People, people who have never experienced. Yeah. People with just cell phones have never had the experience of someone getting mad at you and slamming the phone down. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it was a click, a sound when someone slammed the phone. It was interesting. You mentioned phone booths. Right. You know, people don't even remember the phone booths anymore. Nah. It's you interesting. Can't even find one, man. And if it's there, it's just... And I'm really not that old, but I should I know. have a dinosaur now. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I mean, when, I, when did 50 become old, man? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Julian, man, it's great. Go ahead. <laughs> Well, Julian, you know, this book is a wrestling fan. Like I said, it. it's, it's awesome. I mean, just to, to, it brought me back to God. a lot of the people that I grew up, because like I said, I mean, I started, okay, I don't want to talk about old again, but, yeah. you know, I started watching <laughs> wrestling back in the 1970s, yeah. and I grew up on S.D. Jones and, and the Junkyard Dog. Yeah, yeah. and So many and familiar names. So many. Rocky Johnson, God. I didn't even realize, I didn't even yeah. make the connection that that was, that was uh, The Rock's dad, you right? know, and, yeah. and the, the, the history that he has. In the industry so your your book brought me back to a lot but okay but Uh oh here's the but <laughs> there's a but coming oh man all right i almost put your book away because Ooh. you had one person in there who scares the living shit out of me <laughs> can you guess who it is no, nope, not Abdullah the Butcher, although uh, he's pretty, uh, yeah. pretty close, pretty close. He got me. Pretty close. <laughs> there is not one time that I can see this man on television without covering my eyes, and my kids have now even recognized, I even let out a little scream when he comes on the thing, and that's not like me. I'm not really a screamer. The Boogeyman. Wow. The Boogeyman. Wow. That man had such an impact on me watching wrestling because, <laughs> as you know, he would eat live worms yeah. on the show. Man. When he showed up this year at WrestleMania, I almost turned the show off, ran out of the room. <laughs> I mean, she you, did, man. I did. And my kids, whenever they want to like prank me, it's always around the boogeyman. Yeah. It's like, Mom, well, the boogeyman will be there. The boogeyman will be on the show, Mom. And I'm like, shut up. It's awesome, man. So you did bring me back <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of really awesome memories. But if you ever write another volume, leave him out. Just for me so I can read the whole book. Leave him out. He's, he gives me nightmares. <laughs> well, Lisa, I got to say this. You know, I got to give him credit. That, that character did what he was supposed to do. Right? right, I know. The absolute with Jesus out of everyone. Right. Yep. Man. <laughs> but he was an interesting, he's an interesting guy. His real name is Marty Wright. And he was one of those guys who came through Vince's Tough Enough program. But he's also one of the 
guys you would see as an extra in these physical movies like Any Given Sunday and The Replacements and The Transporter, you know. Yeah. Pretty big guy. He'd be in these action-packed movies like that. So he's an interesting guy, you know, but yeah, his, his character did exactly what he was supposed to do. Yeah. And I mean, he grossed everyone out yep. the yeah. I, can't, I can't even having this conversation with yeah. you is turning oh, yeah. my stomach oh, so boy. we'll yeah, move on to it <laughs> <laughs> nah, you know Julie I want to ask you about something too man. all the people that were taken too early man we mentioned Junkyard Dog going early too you know I mean uh, talk about you know Bad Leroy Brown man Big Daddy Lipscomb Jimmy Harlem Brown Ray Candy all those guys, man, were taken way too early. Could you imagine if, like, they had actually gone on and had the careers that, that and lived into the fifties? I mean, because some of the, you know, obviously, thirty-one, man, Big Daddy Lipscomb was only thirty-one. Julian, I mean, exactly. uh, could you imagine if that guy had gone on and, and and kept going? You know, I mean, some of these guys were taken way too early, man. And I really liked Ray Candy as a kid. Yeah, I remember him right? growing up as well. And I'll be totally honest with you, EJ, and this is the God's honest truth. The Junkyard Dog was actually one of the impetus for me to write this book. Wow. I wrote the original book in 1998 because that 1998, it, it, uh, the first guy I'd ever seen in a live show, headline a main show, at the Clinton YMCA in Clinton, South Carolina. Wow. The head he headlined, it was, it was Houston Harris. Houston Harris used the name Bobo Brazil. <laughs> Bobo Brazil versus Black Jack Mulligan in the headliner. Man. That was the first show I ever saw as a child in the 70s. Well, Houston Harris died in like January of 98. And then later that year, in like July, the summer of 98, the junkyard dog was killed in a car accident. Yeah. And as a young African-American fan, these were guys that brought up my childhood. Right. And I was like, wow, there's not even a book out there on those guys. Right. So I said, let me write a book about those guys. And then I was thinking about them, like, what if I'm going to write a book? How do I leave out Ernie Land? Yeah. How do I leave out, you know, Thunderbolt Patterson? How do I leave out, you know, Bearcat Wright? How do I not write about, at the time, The Rock or Booker T? So it became a more encyclopedia, but it was the death of the junkyard dog and Bobo Brazil in 1998 that inspired me to do this project. Man, you got a great shot of Bobo Brazil, Muhammad Ali in the book too, man. Great shot. That's just, man. <laughs> I, love, I love that picture, man. Ah, oh, Julian. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that because Muhammad Ali himself was a major wrestling fan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was gorgeous George, mm -hmm. the wrestler, that got him, that inspired him to wear the robes and to be flashy and showy. Right. Muhammad said when he, right after he won the the gold, Olympic gold medal, he was on a television show, and they were interviewing him, but they were also interviewing Gorgeous George. And he saw Gorgeous George's performance, <laughs> how George lit up the audience, and he was a bad guy. Yeah. So that inspired Muhammad's whole shtick, <laughs> the Gorgeous George the rest. It's awesome, man. History. I mean, that's just... History, man. You know, love that. <laughs> oh, Julian, having you on this show, man. I love it, yeah. Oh, man. Having you on this show is tremendous. I, I, I could talk to you for two days, man. Love it. <laughs> if you're ever, ever in New York, man, I, you're coming to have dinner with us, man. I, I got to hang out with you. <laughs> awesome stuff, Julian. All right, man. Well, let's, let's get you out of here. Of course, uh, we're talking to, oh, man, we are talking to Julian Shabazz. He wrote the Black Stars, a pro wrestling book, and we finally got a chance to talk to him. And I, man, we can't thank you enough for hanging out with us and joining us today. And Man, will you please take care, be well. You want anyone to find you on your social pages or anything like that? You want anybody to know where they can find your book and all that stuff? Yes, they can find me on social media, social media using my name, Julian Shabazz, J-U-L-I-A-N-S-H-A-B-A-Z-Z. Mm -hmm. I also have a .com, com. where nice. I can order my books, everything. And I do public speaking. I'm always available to come out. They can find me on my website. And it's yeah. been my pleasure being on you guys' show. Thank you so much. Sports for loser. Man. I'm in the house. Thank you. <laughs> Love it, man. <laughs> Love it. All right, Jill. You take care, man. We'll talk to you soon, all right? Bye-bye. See you later, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I, I just... I, I love that kind of stuff, and uh, it's a pretty decent segue to walk us into what's happening uh, here pretty quick here in the WWE. 
And, uh, man, again, thanks to Julian. Uh, a great interview. Uh, he was fantastic. Was. I loved having him on he the air with us. Uh, yeah. Definitely going to be in touch with him again. And um, so what do you got? You got some WWE well, discussion. I'm going to talk about in. some World Cup stuff, yep. of course. So I'm only going to take like a few seconds of everybody's time and just remind them all that this coming Sunday is Money in the Bank, oh, boy. which is a very, very anticipated event of the year because whoever wins the Money in the Bank, you have the suspense of who's when, the when and the how they're going to cash it in um, for the whole year. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through every match, but it is Ronda Rousey's first big match mm -hmm. against Nia Jax. Um, you know, and then on top of that, of course, the Money in the Bank ladder matches. There's both a women's championship contract up for grabs and a men's ch a world championship contract up for grabs. So uh, you definitely want to tune into the WWE Network this weekend. I personally would like to see, I'm going to just put my predictions out there. Um, I would love to see Becky Lynch take uh, Money in the Bank. <laughs> um, I, however, I honestly think, I don't know why, but I don't know if Natalia is um, going to retire. Everybody keeps whispering wow. that word. So maybe she might get it just um, to kind of give yeah. her this spin to slowly, yeah, they you can know, quickly, get her. quickly use the yeah. money in the bank thing, too. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. If she's around the spot. Oh, you know, no, she, she if she wins it, wait a minute. She oh, can. yeah, she can, right? You That's can, what I'm saying. Go get the title. If you win it, you can use yeah. it that night if you want yeah. to. Uh, but again, I'd like to see Becky Lynch or even Ember yeah, Moon win. That's cool. In terms of the men, um, I would like to see Bobby Roode take it. Yeah. Or oh, I would, yes. <laughs> or I would love to see Finn Balor win it. Um, so those are my two that I would like to see. Uh, predictions, I'm not so sure. I think this one can go any way. Uh, Samoa Joe's a big dude, you know, yeah, so he, he can kind of destroy everybody. It's kind of Rusev's time. Ah. So, um, ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what I don't want to see is I don't yeah, want to see Lana win that yeah, money I'm in sure. the bank. Oh, that would God. be interesting. Yeah. But other than that, it looks like it's going to be a really great show. So watch yeah. that. I just wanted to tie that into this nice. interview. <laughs> That's cool. And I'll send it over to you to That's talk about cool. this World Cup, yeah. which you are dying I to can't, start. I, can't I mean, even, I mean I, 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 that's no, like his no, World Series, Super Bowl, and everything all, all rolled one. up into I mean, one. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's four years of like waiting and waiting and waiting. And of course, Italy's not there, and USA's not there. And that's crushing. I mean, by USA not being there, I can kind of handle. I mean, that's, I'm okay with that. But Italy not being there? Yeah. <laughs> like, I lost sleep over that. When, yep. I, when we didn't get past, I, no, I'm not. Okay. Yeah, I, I still can't believe we're not there. Um, anyway. Yeah, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, Russia and Saudi Arabia are going out. I already have plays given out to my people who are going to be getting my picks all through the World Cup. For 150 mm -hmm. bucks. I'm giving out all my plays and advice throughout the entire tournament for 150 bucks. And I'm actually even going to help people out. There's some people I'm going to actually talk about. You know what? If you can't afford that, I get it. I'll even talk to you about it. Because I'm like that, and I'm cool like that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. I even posted... As such, uh, you know, yep. listen, listen I, I'm not trying to take anyone's money. I just want to help you win money. That's what it's all well, about. That, that's the thing. And if you've been following you DJ money. on his Twitter feed, you'll see that he has a very, very good success you rate. Think? And, he, it, and trust me, he doesn't sit here and say, I'm only going to post the success stories and I'm not going to post when I get a, a game wrong or anything like that. He literally p will tell you exactly what, what you know, um, his picks, yeah. successful ones are and, and the ones that weren't. What can you do? And his success rate is really, really good. Yeah. Um, so if you're into the betting stuff and, yeah. and you definitely want to make some money on, on the World Cup, please check out his website and check out yeah. his Twitter feed, at EJ the Rainmaker. Yeah, you what? Tennis, man. Tennis, the gentleman in Stuttgart, the Netherlands and Italy this week as well. The women are in Nottingham and Manchester as we get closer to the Wimbledon. Oh, boy. Our grass season's awesome. Our clay season just came to an end, and now they're on the grass. I, I like when they're on grass. It's a whole different surface, of course. And, uh, man, Wimbledon comes at the end of the month. Another major. <laughs> I mean, the French was pretty sweet. That was fun. I, I, you know, I enjoyed the hell out of that 9-0 and day I had in the middle yeah. of that, and then the 6-0 and day I had before that, and blah, baby. Yeah, no joke, I'm just sitting there cranking them out, loving it, loving it. Just, uh, man, I, I, I was flying around the house. Every few minutes, I would yeah. hear, got another one. Yeah. Eight, no, nine, Boom. no. Boom. Uh, I like, mean, you, know, you can't make this stuff up. Uh, no. I was just, uh, like, floating around the house. And you can only get like that when you go 9 and 0. So. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know, again, I really want to thank Julian for hanging out with us. He was fun. I hope we get to even talk to him again. If he puts another book out there, you know we'll have him back. Um, and of course, uh, you know, anything else you want to leave everybody with before we get the heck out of here? Or what? No, I just want to tell everybody to make sure that you check us out um, at radio.sportspalooza.com. Please follow us on... We're at sportspalooza.com now, too. 
We're not oh, even right. using the radio okay. Sports Palooza. Yeah. And follow us on Twitter. Yeah, at Palooza Radio. At Palooza Radio. Yeah, and you can yeah, follow yeah. EJ at EJ the Rainmaker. You can follow me at Virgin Traveler. Yeah. I still do use Gal Sports Writer, but I really kind of um, am more on the Virgin Traveler uh, website or Twitter feed than I yep. am on anything. Our YouTube so, channel is uh, Palooza Sports now. So uh, we're, we're going to get that. We're using little. Spreaker. Yep. We're using Spreaker and YouTube, and they're all kind of universal. SoundCloud, they all kind of blend together. Anyone who has any of these accounts know that if you have one, they kind of all universally work together. So we're going to be right. all on that. And um, so, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah pretty good so stuff. I, so just, just I also want to thank Jillian for coming on. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and thank you listeners for listening to yeah. us again. We've Thanks. been hearing back yeah. from some people who are excited that we're on the air Love again. It. So thank you so much for that. If you do like our, our show, please leave us some feedback. Yeah. Please follow us on iTunes and follow us on Spreaker Man, and wherever else you find everywhere us. Everywhere you can follow us. Exactly. Because <laughs> um, the more feedback we get and hey, the more follows we get, we the better it. it is. So we, we really it. do appreciate everybody we listening out there. We do love it. All right, let's cue that music and let's get everybody out of here. Um, everybody have a good rest of the week. We will see you next Wednesday here at Sports Palooza. We are out of here. Bye bye. bye.